All right, good evening, everyone. You're coming in tonight. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to That's All Devotionals. As you're here, as you're coming in, just say hello. Um, how are you doing tonight? This evening, rather. How's everyone doing? Just say hello, hello, Shamik. Um, for those who are here already, I just want to say right off the bat, um, our Heart for Waiting series that was scheduled for tonight. Um, we just had to postpone it until tomorrow um, night, same time tomorrow at six o'clock. But you're stuck with me <laughs> tonight. So I hope you I hope you stick around um, to have devotion with me tonight. It's going to be a good one nonetheless. And so we had to um, postpone our uh, series tonight, and we're going to pick it up uh, tomorrow night at 6 p.m. But tonight you're stuck with me as you're coming in. Hello, Shamik. As you're coming in, um, just say hello, and we're going to get started. And it's just going to be a really phenomenal time in the Lord. I hope <laughs> that you are not um, disappointed and you're going to stick around for devotion tonight. Again, if you're here, and you're watching, just say hello, and I'm going to get started right now without any further delays. Um, let me pull this up real quickly. All right, tonight I am going to talk briefly about the subject matter of no limits. Hello, Jalissa. Hello, welcome to that's all devotionals. Again, as, as if you're coming in, just say hello and we're going to get started. Tonight, I want to talk about no limits. No limits. Uh, the definition of limit is, I'll pull it up on the on the dictionary. I had one, but I wanted to use a dictionary definition tonight. It says a point or level beyond which something does not or may not extend or pass. The definition that I do like, however, is the one that says a restriction on the size or amount of something permissible or possible. Those were the dictionary definition of limit. Okay, but I like the one that says a restriction on the size or amount of something permissible or possible. And so as we talk about no limits tonight, I am going to, what is the name of your book that talk about fear? Uh, it is on the journey, <laughs> a matter of fact, on the journey, let me put it in the, um, the comment before we get started on the journey. Um, I, I, I spoke about, I wrote about um, Shamik, um, how to let fear fear um, in On the Journey, available on Amazon. Let me put it on now. All right, available on 
Amazon. All right. Let me also um, put the banner up there. Okay, so you can see it there on the journey, a daily devotional available on Amazon. And so tonight I am going to, I, I'm, I want to give away my first devotional that I wrote, A Journey to Transformation, Trajectory, A Journey to Transformation. I want to give this away tonight to the first person that inboxed me. Um, and I also want to give another copy away to somebody who bought on the journey and would like to get the first copy um, inbox me and I will mail you a copy. So on the journey, a journey to try tra trajectory, a journey to transformation um, is available. So tonight we are going to get into it. No limits, no limits. We are living in a, a time where fear is crippling the hearts of so many people. And um, I will not tell you that it's easy to um, overcome the spirit of fear, but I want to let you know tonight that it is possible to overcome fear and that certainly fear is <laughs> Let me tell you something. It is a spirit, certainly, and it's not from God, as we as we know, because the Bible did tell us that He did not give us a spirit of fear, but He gave us a spirit of love and power, and a, of a sound mind. And it is a negative emotion. Fear is a negative emotion. It is. It is just like other spirits that tries to seep into our human spirit and cause a lot of distortion in our minds and cause us to believe things that are not even there. And it restricts us from going after the thing or things that God has called us to. And so tonight, Understanding this spirit, I want to, again, talk to you on no limits. No limits. Jimmy Carter says, and I quote, Go out on the limb. That's where the fruit is. Many of you, I grew up in Jamaica. I've I've been to a few other islands and I've seen fruit trees here also in America. And some of the sweetest fruits as I know it as a child growing up, always, it was just always the, the June plum, the, the, the plum, <laughs> the coconut, the mango was always at the end edge of the branch you know the one that you are the one that you are looking on the one that looks the sweetest and the ripest always seemingly was at the edge of the branch if you if you had a similar experience why don't you go ahead and say amen it's always at the end and you have to go through so much <laughs> so much um you know, <laughs> so much things. You sometimes I remember as a child, you have to sometimes get a stick <laughs> um, if you couldn't get if you couldn't get to the edge of it by climbing on the tree. Sometimes you have to get a a, a stick, a, a, you know, a long stick to kind of like you know to push it so that it <laughs> it will come off. Um, it took so much effort to get the best of what that tree has to offer in, 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 in by meaning the fruit. It took so much effort. And um, many times, many times, um, when, when I did climb the tree, I remember one time I fell off the tree when I was younger because I was trying to get the, the plum, but not realizing that a part of, a part of the branch was broken. And I climbed the branch, I climbed the tree to the branch. And then all of a sudden I hear, Kirk. 
and then down I came. And so there's risk involved in getting the things that we desire. There is risk involved, but without a risk, there cannot be a reward. Say that with me. Without a risk, there cannot be any reward. And so Jimmy Carter says again, once again, and I quote, tonight as you're coming in, just say hello. I'm talking tonight. We have to, we had to postpone our uh, heart uh, Heart of Waiting series until tomorrow night due to uh, some unforeseen things with our guest. She's lovely and she's willing to join us tomorrow night um, at six o'clock. Hello, Fatima. As you're coming in, just say hello. Tonight is going to really bless you. I'm going to tell you this right now. It's going to really, really bless you. So Jimmy Carter says, go on the limb. That's where the fruit is. And again, I said, if there is no risk involved, there won't be any reward. And I shared with you as a child going after the mango and in particular the plum, I'll never forget, I fell, I fell off the tree because there was a broken um, branch there. Um, but everything that you, everything that God puts inside of us is going to require risk taking. No risk, no reward. And so we have to understand tonight, there's a song that I love. I love it. Um, Oceans um, by Hillsong. And the song says, spirit lead me where my trust is without border. Let me walk upon the water wherever you will call me. And I love it. He says, says, take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Good evening and tonight. And those lyrics have really challenged me to unshackle myself from limitations. And if you, when you get a chance, go ahead and listen to it, Oceans by Hillsong. It has really challenged me mentally to unshackle the change, the chains that held me hostage for a long time to tap into the thing that God has called me to. And so I am encouraging you tonight if God has called you to do something, I'm asking you tonight to take the limits off your mind, your heart, your spirit. Let there be no boundaries, obviously, spiritually. Let there be no boundaries as to what you tell yourself that you can do in God. Because if God has called you to it, he has placed inside of you the tools, the equipments that you already need to fulfill the vision and the purpose for that which he has called you to. All you have to do is to simply tap in to what God has called you to do. Take the limits off of God and then take the limits off yourself. You can do it. And so tonight, I want to reference Matthew chapter 14 um, from verse 25 to 29. And also the story is in Mark chapter 6, 45 to verse 52. And we see this, and I've mentioned this a couple times, but I want to get into the depth of it tonight. There were 12 apostles, there were 12 disciples on the boat. Uh, Jesus told them to go on the other side. Um, he will meet them on the other side. If you read the story, he told them that, and then he he journeyed up to the mountain to pray. Now, given the fact that Jesus um, was God manifested in flesh and he knew all things, 
and he was up on the mountain and when you're up on the mountain when you're when you're at a higher level you can see the storm when it's coming listen to this so he sent them on the other side and he went up to pray into the mountains now don't you think that he saw when he went up there, that he saw danger lurking. He could see ahead that a storm was coming. You can see those kind of things when you're up on the mountain. And being God, he, he, he's omniscient. He knows all things. He's omnipotent. You know, he knows. He knows everything. He's everywhere. And there it is. I want you to pay keen attention to this tonight because this is going to really revolutionize your thoughts tonight. So here he is. These disciples are in the boat and they're journeying to the other side by instruction from Jesus. <laughs> the Lord gave them instruction to go to the other side. I love it. I love it. Every time I think about it, I chuckle. He told them. He was the one who told them, go back to it, to go to the other side. And he went up to the mountain. And then they found themselves in the middle of the ocean. And a storm came. You would think, right, that being the Lord, seeing from afar off that danger was ahead, you would think that somehow <laughs> that he would come and try to signal them to come back to the shore because a storm was lurking, a storm was on the horizon, but to our dismay, to my dismay as a reader, he did not. Isn't it just like God that he tells you to do these things, whatever your thing is, whatever your it is, and then right in the middle of you doing it, trouble hits you, an unforeseen turmoil arise. And if you're like me, you ask yourself, well, God, you told me to do this. And so if you tell me to do this, why am I experiencing a storm, if you will? Does this make sense to anybody? Why? So he told them to go and then a storm erupts. And then what is also puzzling about this whole situation is that he waited until they were in the center of the ocean. He waited until they were too far gone. <laughs> he waited until they were too far gone from shore when he decides that he's going to show up. Now, people, he didn't even show up with a motorboat or something. <laughs> he didn't show up with another, another um, ship, a bigger ship, you know, to help them. Because imagine, now the storm erupted. The wind is, the Bible says the wind was blowing contrary. Water was in the boat already. They were panicking. They were in fear for their lives. And they couldn't necessarily see to navigate themselves back to the shore. So they were in the middle of nowhere by divine instruction. <laughs> and so Jesus now... <laughs> decides to come on the scene not with the help that we think that he should have 
not with the help that would make sense to our logics. He didn't come with a boat. He didn't come with other men um, to, 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 pass, to probably help just in case somebody, the boat capsided. He didn't come with a life jacket. He didn't come with anything. He just showed up walking on the water. What kind of God is this? Have you, ever, have you ever asked yourself when you're in the middle of a calamity, when you are in the midst of your pain, when you're in the midst of your chaos, when you're in the midst of your confusion, and you know that you got a word from the Lord, and then the answer that you are getting doesn't make sense to your mind. And I don't know about you, but I asked this all. I said, God, what kind of God is this? What kind of God are you? Does this make sense? 12 of them in a boat. No life jacket. He didn't bring life jacket. He didn't bring, he didn't bring another boat. He didn't do nothing. But he came walking on the water. Now, how are you going to help me walking on the water? You told me to go. We're in. We, 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 the, the wind is blowing. The water is raging. Everything is just out of sorts. We're panicking. We're in fear for our lives, and you come walking on water. What kind of God is this? <laughs> it's beyond the wildest imagination and comprehension that doesn't make any sense but i want to let you know tonight before i even go any further that there are reasons why god does the things that he does in our lives when we are on a journey when he is taking us on a journey and it's only to allow us to put our faith and our confidence only in him and him alone and not by anybody around us it's really something it's really really something this jesus that i love so much this Jesus that you love so much, the things that he asks us to do. And then, here it is now. Listen to this now. He came walking on the water. I'm going to wrap up soon, but I want you to get it. Remember, recall how many of them are in the boat. I'm talking tonight about no limits. How many of them are in the boat? 12 of them are in the boat. He came. They saw the figure walking on the water. And he somehow alleviate their fears. He does that to us in times of trouble. You know, he will, he will say, he will send a word. He will send, you know, he'll send somebody to give us a, a, a word of encouragement, a word of cheer, you know. So he, he, he alleviated their fear. He saw, they saw the, 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 the image. They thought it was a ghost. And he said to them, it's me. It's me. You know, it's me. So he, so he, the first signal, he's like, it's me. It's me. In other words, the scripture said, he said, it's I, it's I. He said, it's I. So he alleviated their fear somewhat. And then Peter, remember, listen to this folks, 12 of them, they're, they're, they're around Jesus. They, 
they they walked with him they seen him do miracles they they see him perform miracles and um he healed the sick he raised the dead so they've seen him you know they 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 should be they should at least at this point know his voice and he said it's i and peter said to them peter said well if it's you bid me come on the water we're talking tonight about no limits is it possible that you are familiar with the things of god and not his voice he told them he signaled them he gave them an indication that it's him he said it's i and peter said if it's you in other words you told me to come over here you told me to get on this boat you told me to do x y z if it's you let me come on the water hmm <laughs> think about it folks if it's you that tell me to do this then god you're going to have to do the miraculous how many of us are audacious enough to pose a challenge i'm telling you god love risk takers he does he does he does he does he does he does where are you tonight in the middle of what god has called you to do where are you tonight praise the lord Char charlene where are you tonight with what god has called you to do are you still confined to your boat of limitations or are you ready to take a walk on the water where there are no boundaries where there are no limits are you ready to do that are you ready to allow god to take you to the next level to that which he has called you too are you ready to take the limits off of him and peter said if it's you bid me come on the water peter was saying i am tired of being restricted i am tired of being confined to this boat i want to experience something deeper and greater in you and the lord accepted his challenge and what did he say to peter he said come i want to pause though and i want to say this to every single person that each of those disciples that were in the boat had the same opportunity as Peter God is not partial his miracles are not partial every single every single disciple in that boat in that boat had the same opportunity they heard the same voice they heard the same command but only one only one decided to took to take one foot out of the boat on the water and the other foot out and listen to me come on let's let's be let's be logical here let's be logical here Let's be logical here. 
he didn't just, listen, he did not just come out like that with the wind blowing, the storm, the water in his eyes and, you know, can't see. It's, it's, it's dark. I believe that he had one hand on that boat still. And I believe with everything inside of me, because he was human, that he was, his, his knees were buckling. There was something still inside of him that says, whoa, what am I, what am I going to do? But guess what? He did it nonetheless. Go to the limb. That's where the fruit is. And when one foot was on the water and he realized, oh, it didn't sink in. Because guess what? Water. <laughs> Think about when you go to the beach. You're not, you're not floating. Okay? We're, we're not floating. We're not light creatures. Come on, people. We're heavy. We, we're, we're, going, we're going in. So when he realized that he put the one foot and he realized, oh, my foot didn't go in. It's actually a flat surface. <laughs> tell you, miracles was happening. Miracles was happening right throughout the process. Because gravity, <laughs> gravity, and, 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 how, and how it's created, he was supposed to go in. He was supposed to sink in. But miracles was happening from the moment he decided that he was going to put one foot on the water and it caught him and it held him up. And then he put another foot in and then he realized, Ooh, I'm standing, I'm <laughs> standing on this, I'm standing on this. And then he, he posture himself and then he began to walk. Every person in that boat had the same opportunity to do exactly what he did. Listen to this. I'm of the persuasion that the other disciples, based on their personalities that were described in scriptures, in the scriptures, one of them said to him, you must be crazy. What do you think you're doing? Are you sure that it's Jesus? Granted, they should, they should have all known it was him. They should have known that distinct voice. One of them probably said to him, well, what about your family? What if you're drawn on the way going? I mean, one of them probably saying, what do you want me to tell your wife? You remember he had a wife, you know? What do you want me to tell your wife? I, we don't know if he had children. What didn't say? What do you want? Me, what do you want me to tell your mother, Peter? What are you doing? Are you crazy? Are you silly? Are you stupid? Are you mad? Isn't it just like people to talk you out of your blessing when you're on the way to it? Isn't it just like people to 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 come up with all kinds of things to deter you? And sometimes they're meaningful things that they're telling you. But you have to be so assured, and this is the hour that we're living in, that you have to be so assured that you have heard the voice of the master. He said, my sheep knows my voice. And I like to tell people this when I talk to them, that if God told you and you made a declarative statement when everything was calm and smooth. If God told you when it was good, he still tell you when it's bad. If he did not come, <laughs> because one of the things that we like to do, and I've seen it happen so many times, one of the things that we like to do is that when things are smooth, we say, well, the Lord told me to do it and I'm going ahead and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And you're, you, you venture out and you're doing it and you, 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 you gain some success and you see certain things happening. But then when, you, when things start to get shaky, all of a sudden you begin to question whether or not it was God. If he said it when it's bad, 
If he said it when it's good, he said it when it's bad. And all those, and I talk about the dark places um, in, in previous devotions, all the dark places is doing is teaching you how to tune your ears to him, how to, how to sharpen your character, how to purify your heart. That's all it's doing. It, it, doesn't, it didn't say quit. It didn't say quit because God is trying to take you somewhere. But what many of us do, we quit when things get bad. We quit when we can't get the mango from off the tree. We don't exhaust all the possibilities. We quit. We don't, we don't, we don't go to the length and to the extent to work to what God is calling us to. We quit. If God says it when it's good, he says it when it's bad. His word will never return unto him void. But it shall profit and it shall prosper. We are into the thing that he sent it. You can't give up. Not because a storm is raging. I'm talking from experience. Not because a storm is raging mean that you give up. Mean that you quit. If he told you to go on the other side, whatever the other side is in your life, that means somewhere in the middle of it he is going to show up and he may not show up the way that you want but you best believe that there is something miraculous that lies beyond your human comprehension and every disciple in the boat and this is what breaks my heart that the story could have been different. And I believed that God wanted it to be different. But hey, it could be different. It could have been all 12 of them that walked on the water to see Jesus. But only one recognized the voice. Only one challenged the voice. Sometimes people say not to ask God why. I don't know. But he said, if it's you, bid me come. And he walked on the water. Tonight I'm talking about taking the limits off. You are already in the deep and there is no turning back. And the only thing that you can do is go deeper and deeper or higher and higher in God. You cannot turn back now. You're gone too far. God allowed the storm for a reason. He allowed the winds to come against you. He allow, he allow certain things to happen. He allows certain things to happen. And the thing, the thing that I've learned throughout these couple months is that it's not working against me. It's working for me. The thing that may be happening to you right now is not working against you. It looks like it. The weapon is formed and it looks like it's going to prosper. But I want to tell you tonight that it's not going to prosper. It looks like you're going down. It looks like, it looks like you're, you, this thing is going to drown you and overshadow you and take you over and consume you. Whatever word that you would like to use, it wants to devour you. It wants to eat you alive. I want to encourage you tonight. Keep on going. Keep on walking. Keep on walking. Face the storm. Face the wind. Face it. Face it. Face it. Because what lies ahead is Jesus. Hallelujah. Eleanor Roosevelt said, and I'll quote, do one thing every day that scares you. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Do something. <laughs> and I wrote in the book, Shamik, uh, do not despise opposition. 
Eleanor Roosevelt said, do one thing a day that scares you. Think about it tonight. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, and we know this very well, now unto him who's able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. There is a power that is working in you. There's a power that is working in me. The Bible says in Hebrews 1 and verse 1, now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things, not what? Seen. He did not see Jesus. He just heard the voice and he walked toward the voice. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. He did not rescue them the way that they thought. And I realize more and more often, he's not going to answer the way that we think. Nope. He's not going to answer the way that we think. Every answer that we seek from God is going to cause a challenge within us. It's going to challenge our faith so that our faith can be strengthened. I'm telling you this, you ask anybody, you call to your remembrance. Every time God came to your rescue, if it was the way that he, that you thought, never. And every time he answered, didn't your faith, didn't your faith get strengthened? Didn't you do something that you never thought that you would do? Yes. That's the way that he does it. And that is the reason why I hold, I hold on to this mantra. If he said it when it's good, he says it when it's bad. Mm -hmm. Even if you're in the middle of chaos, if he says it when it's good, he says it when it's bad because there's something that he's going to extract from you to reveal your purpose like you have never known it before. I know this. I know this. I've proven this to be true. Tonight, take the limits off. Mm. Take it off of him. Take it off. You don't have to end up in a divorce court. You don't have to take the limits off God. Maybe, maybe you're going through the challenge in your relationship because God is trying to extract a love that you've never known before. Man, maybe you got laid off your job because God wants you to pursue your purpose. Maybe, I'm telling you, maybe, you know, the, the, the deal didn't work out because God has something greater for you. And God is saying, listen, I want you to tap in. I want you to tap in to your creativity. I want you to tap into your creative mind and pull out something that you never saw come in. The other talent that's laying on the inside of you. Come on, somebody, take the limits off. And say, just like just like the devotion on Tuesday. What if, what if, what if, what if you're facing the storm? Because God wants you to realize something that's deeper laying down on the inside of you. And he wants to just bring it to the surface, not just for you, but he just wants you to just serve humanity in, in, in your realm. You never know what God is causing the storm in your life for. Thank you very much. The same God on the mountain is the same God in the valley. I believe that. I've come to believe that with all of my heart. Mm. Yes. Is this making sense to anybody tonight? I hope this is making sense to everybody tonight. Mm -hmm. I remember I used to make all kinds of excuses as to why I can't, and I'm telling you the truth, you know, I always think, well, somebody's better than me, and yes, obviously, there are people that are better, you know, people that are more smarter, and more 
intelligent. You got to give people their credit. They're people that are just like, oh my God, like Einstein. They're just, they're just, they're just brilliant people. And sometimes, yes, as I said, as I wrote in the, on, on the devotion this morning, that fear compares. When you're living in fear, you compare yourself to other people. But when God has called you, man, and you realize that you were uniquely designed and that you were uniquely created, I'm telling you, you will burst the shackles that has held you hostage. And it first starts in your mind. You have to break the shackle mentally first. That's why I, thought, that's why I talk about your thought, your speech, your action. That when, if you think it, you're going to speak it. And if you speak it, that's how you're going to walk. But so you have to first, you have to first break it in your mind first. And so when I was trying to embark with writing, you know, my devotionals and 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 doing the even this online devotion, and I think, well, there are other people doing it, and there are other people that are that is better than me, and and all these kind of things. But he was calling me to do something. You know, he was calling me to do something and he's calling you to do something. And I used to just say, well, there are other people that are better writers than I am. And there are, but he wasn't, he wasn't thinking about who was better than me. He was telling me to do it. You understand? He, and, I, and I'm talking to you. He's not telling you that there's not a better baker than you. He's not telling you that there's not a better singer than you. He's not telling you that there's not a better seamstress, a, a, a better graphic designer, um, a better um, host. He's not telling you any of that stuff. He's just telling you to do what he called you to do. Of course, there's going to be somebody who's better but he didn't call them. He's calling you. So that means that once you take your one foot out of your boat of limitation and begin to walk, then the sky, they say, becomes the limit. But I like to say this now. The sky is not the limit. God's best is the limit for your life. God's best is a limit, not the sky. God's best for you is a limit. And so when you're fearing, you compare yourself to the next person and that person, the person who's doing it now, the person who did it before, and maybe the person who's going to do it after you. Why? Fear compares. And you have to break that. Stop comparing yourself. I said it in previous devotion. I don't know why it's coming back tonight. But as we're nearing the end of the year, some of you have not tapped into what God has called you to do yet. You are still restricted by the boat. You have a boat mentality. You have a boat mind. Just the four, you know, however the boat is shaped, you know, like this. You're still confined to it. And God is saying, step out of it. Don't you see me? Don't you see me ahead? Step out and begin to walk. Do what I called you to do. Write the book, man. Write it. Even if, Listen, I tell myself, I tell myself this. I tell myself this. My intention, my intention and the minute my intention changes is when you won't see me anymore. My intention is to save one person at a time. One, one person. If, 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 if this can impact one person, I believe that one person can go ahead and impact 10 people. And that 10 can impact a, a, a hundred and a hundred, a thousand. And one day I'm going to talk to you about the ministry of Jesus and it's going to change your life. The ministry of Jesus. Something that he, he brought to my attention that I'd never seen before. And the minute I began to write was the minute the, the scriptures began to unfold. I, I, I read the scriptures off many times. I read through the entire Bible and I never see some of the things that I've seen until I began to write. So you just never know what God is calling you to do. You just never know. Maybe he's calling you to start a ministry. 
Maybe he's telling you to go pray for the person next door. Maybe you just do what he tells you to do. Take the limits off. Don't worry about the, the, the more prolific um, person that you know that, you know, maybe have proven in signs, wonders, and miracles before. And you're just like, you, you, may, you think to yourself that you're a nobody. Well, I've never done it before. But he didn't call the prolific person to do it. He called you. That means that there's something inside of you that he wants to extract. You're asking God, God, reveal my gift to me. Reveal my purpose. God, what, what is it that you call me to do? And then he, then he challenged you to do something that's against your comprehension. That's exactly what he's trying to do. He's trying to reveal your purpose to you by asking you to take a risk. <laughs> Are you going to be a risk taker? This year, 2020 alone, and I'm wrapping up now, 2020 alone, I said it in previous devotion, 2020 alone brought everybody on a level playing field. It got leveled it out. Everybody was affected all at once. And some people maximized on the moment. Some people maximized on the moment. And some people have gone on to do great things. And all those people, if you talk to them, and I've spoken to a few of them, they never knew that they had it inside of them. The year is not done. And I don't, I don't necessarily believe in certain things like New Year's resolution and things like that. But why don't you tonight, if God has called you to write a book, why don't you tonight turn off the TV, turn off everything, and pick up your, your phone, your notepad on your phone. I'm give you some practical things now. To pick up your computer say a prayer, and just begin to write. If God has called you to bake, <laughs> it's a season I'm thinking about black Jamaican black cake. <laughs> God has called you to bake. If he's called you to, you know, start up a, a pop-up um, restaurant or whatever, why don't you tonight find a quiet place and pray and ask God to give you ingredients that will, will, will fuse together. And that when people, that people never thought could, you know, could, could come together, you know, pineapple and coconut, who would ever thought, you know, things like that. You know, ask God to, to illuminate your mind tonight and say, God, give me some ingredients that, that will that will come together that 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 I haven't seen yet, I haven't tasted yet. And 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 God, you know, give me, 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 give me all the, the working ingredients that, that will cause this dish to to pop, you know, that to come alive, you know. Ask him, God, you know, ask him. You know, chocolate and peanut butter. I mean, come on. I mean, I'm no cook here. But, you know, things that you never thought. God, ask God tonight. You know, if, he, that's, if that's what he called you to. You know, God, help me to blend the, 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 the seasons together. You know, the, 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 you know all, the, all the ingredients together. If God called you to sing, you know, ask God, 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 anoint my voice. You know? And, and and if he's called you to write songs tonight, I'm telling you tonight, 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 lock away, say a prayer and say, God, here I am. God, give me the melody. Give me the words. Get behind your, 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 your piano or your keyboard, whatever instrument you have. If, if you have a voice, Turn on your, 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 your recorder. Come on, use what you got. Use what you got. And just begin to let God just speak to your mind and begin to just sing. 
and record it. And then you never, ever know what, what number one single you could come up with that you could write. And then possibly, come on, somebody. I'm if, am I talking to anybody tonight? And possibly, you may not be the one that sings the song. Maybe it's somebody else. Maybe you could, you could sell it to, to, to somebody else to sing the song. Think about the alabaster box. You know, uh, uh, Janice Strosian wrote that song, An Apostolic Woman. And who sing that? C.C. Winans sing that song. And man, I love that song. You don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster box. And granted, I've heard Janice Strosian, she could sing. Yes, she can sing. But C.C. Winans, but God gave her the thought. So who knows? Come on, somebody. Who knows if, if, if there's a number one song inside of you? And that song, it doesn't matter what season you sing that song, the alabaster song, and man, it does something to you. I'm going to listen to it after this, my God in heaven. If God has called you to write, come on, write, man. Write, write, write. Don't worry about, you know, if it makes sense. Just write, 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 write. Sing, 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 sing. You never know who you're blessing. You just never know. If God told you to go back to school to, to further your education because, you know, you know, where you are right now, you're probably making a certain amount of money. And God is saying, go back to school, you know, go finish your bachelor's, go finish your master's, go do your doctorate or whatever. You know, and you're saying to yourself, man, I don't have the money. I don't have the means. I don't have the ways. God told you to do it. Oh, okay. You better go and apply. Ask for scholarships. Say, God, make ways where there, where there are no ways. He told you. Go back and do it. Fill The first step is that you're going to have to fill out the application. He's not going to come and fill it out for you. You understand? But once you do it, he's going to make the way. If that's what he's calling you to, he's telling you to go back to school. And you're saying, man, I don't see the way possible. I don't have the money. I don't have the means. I already owe, I already owe student loans. And listen, if he tells you to do it, do it. Do it. Is it going to be challenging? You best believe it's going to be challenging. But go ahead and do it. Go ahead and take the limits off of him. I certainly, God has pulled us out of our comfort zone and he's challenging us. Yes, Claudette, to step out. Whatever he's called you to do. He's telling you to start your business, whatever the business may be, you know. The, the, this 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 um this arrangement behind me tonight this 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 um arrangement is a sister from my church all things um all things beautiful um that's her that's her um if i get it right she probably killed me but she designed it a business do your thing guess what there's plenty of these in the stores you know what i'm saying but guess what doesn't matter if that's what God called you to do. Look up, look up her her page on, on on Instagram. If that's what He called you to do, do it. Some of you have 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 um you 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 want to do interior designing and all these kind of stuff. S start from your home, fix up your home and and show it and 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 let people see what you can do. Come on, somebody, take the limits off of God. Take it off of him, whatever it is, whatever, 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 whatever it is. Use what you got. It's already on the inside of you. All things beautiful. Who am I talking to tonight? I'm going to wrap up. I'm done. Who am I talking to tonight? Who am I talking to tonight? Take the limits off of God. All right? So, step out of the boat today, right now. As a matter of fact, come and be an example to others. A testimony that will encourage your own journey. You have all the parts that you need. It's already inside of you. 
I like to close tonight with a man who was at the um, the pool for 38 years. Think about it. 38 years. He was crippled. Talk about this God. Talk about this God. Sick for 38 years. Sitting at a pool. My God. <laughs> and Jesus showed up. <laughs> Bible said that Jesus saw him, you know, saw him. And Jesus showed up. I, I want you to stay with me for this. This is where I'm going to wrap up tonight. Talk about no limits. And Jesus showed up on the scene of his life. And Jesus said to him, do you want to be well? Do you want to be well? He said to the disciples in the boat, it is, it is I. He said to the man, sick for 38 years, do you want to be well? He asked him a question. And the man said, every time, <laughs> I make an attempt to go into the water. Somebody else gets ahead of me. Does it sound like us? And the angel of the Lord come and, 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 and somebody else and trouble the water. Somebody else get ahead of me. And so he makes an attempt. And what, what do you think he did? He went back after somebody else get ahead of him. He didn't stay where he was. <laughs> You know, and this is what puzzled me. Jesus said to him, do you want to be well? And he made all the excuses. And I noticed that Jesus did something again, contrary to the logics. Jesus said to him, take up your bed. And walk. I haven't walked for 38 years. My legs are a trophy. There is no blood rushing down. Everything is dead. I can't walk. Did you hear what I said, Jesus? I said every time I, you know, so he's crawling up to the pool. Jesus, did you hear what I said? Jesus said, take up your bed and walk. I didn't steal this from a book. I didn't steal this from a tape. How is it that you're going to tell a man who hasn't walked for 38 years to take up, not, not get up and walk, but <laughs> not just to get up and walk, but to also take up your excuses, your bed. <laughs> Take up, take up everything and get out of here. What? So Jesus, you're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna give him a hand. You're not going to extend your hand toward him and, 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 and help him up. You, you, you mean Jesus, you, you you saw him from way over there and you, you saw that he couldn't walk and 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 you ask him the question if if he wanted to be well and you know his limitations and you you you're not even gonna offer him a hand no man no no Jesus no Jesus no 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 you, you, you send the disciples out in the middle of uh, uh, on the middle of the ocean. You tell them to go on the other side. You went up. You went up to the mountain to pray. You saw the storm coming. You waited until they were in the middle of the storm, and you didn't. You didn't bring a life jacket. You didn't bring anybody else to to, to help. You, you know. <laughs> and then you, you, you're gonna say it's I. <laughs> and now. I've been going through this for so long and then you're not going to give me a hand? Uh, not even a hand? 
He said, take up your stuff and walk. Take up your bed and walk. When I read deeper in the scripture, the miracle was already there. And the Bible says that there were porches that were around him. In other words, the resources were already there. So Jesus wasn't cruel. Jesus was saying, use what you've got. Use what you got. Use what you got. You ever wonder how he got up and walk? <laughs> you ever wondered how he got up and walk? He had to use what he got. His faith and those porches. And let me tell you something, somebody. <laughs> I could see Jesus watching him when he told him to get up and walk and he didn't give him a hand. That man, after 38 years, I don't care how long you are taking to realize your dream. Today's a day though. Today's a day. Today's a day. It's not going to be 39, 38 years and a day. Today is your day. You're going to get up. God, I've been talking to you for so long from the beginning of the year, maybe since last year, maybe maybe since 10 years ago. Today is a day. Get up and walk because everything that you need is inside of you. It's around you. And that man had to put his hand on one of those porches, one of, one of that brick, brick wall. And he had to put the other one up and he had to muster up some strength. I'm telling you, there's power that's inside of you. There's tenacity that's inside of you that you don't even know yet. I'm telling you, God allow us to, to go through these things because he wants to extract the best that's inside of us. And that man had to put his hand and began to, mm, mm -hmm, mm and begin to pull himself. And every time he pull himself, uh, something come alive in, in, in one of his foot. And, mm, mm, and he had to probably rest his back on one of those porches. Mm, and then and then all of a sudden, blood began to rush down his feet, his legs. Come on. And, and, and then all of a sudden, the, the shakiness of his leg, all of a sudden, stability start to come inside of them. What God is saying, get up. Come on, use what, use what you got. Use what's inside of you. Use what's around you. And he began to pull himself up. The miracle was already there. The miracle was already there. The miracle was already there. And he pulled himself up. And when he did by faith, his legs came back to normal again. Read the story. Read the story in John. Read it tonight. And I'm telling you, I'm done. Take the limits off God and take the limits off yourself. <clears throat> and when he stood up, he took his baggage with him. He no longer needed his bed. His life was renewed. His life was restored. His life was changed. It's already inside of you. Take the limits off. So tonight... Whatever it is, it is that God has called you to do, do it. And there's always going to be, yes, somebody better than you. But like I said, fear compares. Don't worry about it. Just do it. And if he makes the request, he will make the provision. Yes, don't quit when the storm comes. Don't quit when the storm rage. Listen for his still small voice and keep on walking. And what I love about this story, both of these stories, that there were other people around this man that was also sick. The story could have ended differently could have ended differently. It 
could have ended differently. But they were waiting for an angel to come, not realizing that the miracle was there. Come on, sometimes you got to look around you to see if God is blessing, if God is making ways. Come on, it's very possible that he's signaling you. You just got to look, discern. Ask the Lord for discernment. God, whatever you're doing in this season, Lord, don't do it without me. I'm done. Take the limits off. You're God. And take the limits off yourself. You have more power than you think you have. You are more powerful than you think you are. Jimmy Carter says, go to the limb. That's where the fruit is. Eleanor Roosevelt says, <laughs> do something each day that scares you. I want to encourage all my devotioners tonight. With the Lord, all things are possible. And I don't mean carelessly to go jump off, you know, nothing. The all things mean the things that he has called you to do. Okay? Okay? I can do all things, the things that God has called me to do. Through Christ, who strengthens me. God strengthens the things that he's called you to do. Okay? I hope this makes sense to somebody tonight. I hope this is revelatory tonight. I can do all things, meaning the things, the things that God has called me to do. Through him that strengthens me. God strengthens the things that he he calls you to do. So if you're if you're if you're if you're wondering all about and doing all these things that God didn't call you to do just because you think you could do them, he's not going to strengthen them. He will only prosper. He will only prosper the things that he's called you to do. So go back and look over the things that you're doing. And make sure, not because you have talents and abilities to do certain things doesn't mean, doesn't mean that God has called you, a matter of fact, or purposed you to do it. You can do it, but is it in your purpose to do it? Check it, because it's not going to prosper. God prospers the things that he has purposed you to do. You can do all things. All things, I'm, I'm, I'm repeating myself on purpose. You can do all things. You can only do the things that God has called you to do. And God only pr prospers the things that you are purposed to do. That's That was revelation. That's why there's some things. Yes, I have gifts and talents and I will, you know, help. But there's, there's some things I'm... I, I wasn't purposed to do it. Get the people that were purposed to do it to fulfill it. That's what he prospers. There's that's why, that's why there's room at the table for everybody. You understand what I'm saying? There's room at the table for everybody. Everybody is gifted and talented. But God only purpose, prospers what he purposes in your life. So, there's so much more I can say tonight. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says in the book of James. And we think it's, we think it's meant for unsaved people, but it's for us. That we shouldn't be wandering and being tossed to and fro. It wasn't talking about unbelievers. It was written to, to people in the church. You're unstable. It's unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. 
because they're people that are just doing everything that they could put their hands on. And the Bible says that you are unstable. You are double-minded. It's not talking about the sinner. It's talking about the saint. So not because you can do it means that you should do it. God, is this what you have purposed me to do in the earth? Huh? Yes. So many of us are busy, but not productive. You're busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. But you're not productive because God only prospers the things that he purposes in your life. So quit being busy and start fulfilling your purpose. May the Lord bless you tonight. <laughs> May the Lord keep you. And may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and may he be gracious unto you. Take the limits off God. And I want to say again, go on to Amazon, type in on the journey, a daily devotional and order your copy tonight and it's going to bless you, and it's going to change your life. I've gotten text messages and messages about people who have ordered, people who have got their copy, and they started reading, and it's changing their lives as a result. And so tonight, like I promised, I want to give away uh, my first devotional here, Trajectory, A Journey to Transformation, to two people a person who, the first person that inboxed me and a person who has already ordered and can show me that they ordered and have their book, I want to send you the first copy of this book. I want to sign it to you, mail it to you. And you could have it and it's going to change you, your life forever. All right. So may he bless you and may he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And tomorrow night um, at, at 6 p.m., we are going to continue with our series, The Heart of Waiting. It's going to be really, 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 really good. Um, so we look forward uh, to that tonight. We look forward to that tomorrow. Uh, Raquel, yes, love, love, love it. Thank you so much. Um, um, just let, every, let all the devotioners know um, so that, that, that they can that they could um, get a copy as well. All right, praying for you. I hope that you are praying for me as well. I really am soliciting all your prayers tonight as I embark on um, another journey of my life, uh, which I will tell you guys um, later on. Um, you can certainly go on Amazon. It's on Amazon, uh, Samantha. Go on Amazon tonight, type in on the journey. As you see it here, a daily devotional and you'll see um, a lady in a red dress <laughs> on a kayak. Um, yes. Um, then you'll see the lady that looks, I think, like me. <laughs> and uh, you could, you could order it. Um, and um, it's it's gonna it's gonna really really bless you. And so again, I solicit your prayers. And I just want to pray before I end tonight, Lord Jesus, tonight, as only you alone can. I ask that you speak to the mind, the heart the soul and the spirit of every person, oh God, who is watching and that will watch. I pray, oh God, that you allow them to understand that there is nothing that's impossible to you. And God, I pray, Lord God, tonight that their hearts were encouraged and their lives are changed and that you will extract their purpose out of, out of them, oh God, and that you will allow them to see you from a different lens, that you will allow them to take the limits off of you, that they will unshackle the limits from off of themselves, and that they will walk into purpose. Not meaning that that there's not going to be storms, that that means that there's not going to be rain, that doesn't mean that there's not going to be wind, that doesn't mean that certain things won't be erupted. But God, if they can just keep their eyes on you, if they can just listen and heed to the word that says come or that says go. Uh, God, I know, Lord God, that you will continue to work the miracle. God, help them to keep their eyes on you in the midst of the storm. 
and God, that they will come out as pure gold and that they will experience you on another level that they've never thought that they could. Bless each and every one of them now. Bless their families, oh God. Bless them tonight as they go in the stillness and seek after you to, 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 to just extract again the things and the purpose for which that you have called them to. God, speak to them, Lord God. Give them creativity. Give them wisdom. Give them knowledge. Give them understanding, oh God. And help them, oh God, to change their world in Jesus' name. Father, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. And I pray tonight that you were pleased. And I pray that lives will be changed for all eternity. I give you thanks, oh God, unto you who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that I can ask or think according to the power that worketh within me. God, I thank you. I thank you in Jesus' name. And certainly, I will see you on the other side of victory tonight. God bless you. And again, may he, may he cause his face to shine upon you and may he be gracious unto you. So go ahead, inbox me, and then you'll get a, a signed copy of this. And go ahead and order your copy of On the Journey tonight. God bless you. In Jesus' name, and I'll see you tomorrow night, which is different for us, but I'll see you tomorrow night uh, at 6 p.m. Um, 6 p.m. for the heart of waiting. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.